name is Tiffany and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am back with another Louisville home update and this time we're tackling the final bedroom as well as the second bathroom. Before I get started, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my home makeover updates. I'm gonna start with the bathroom makeover because I love how this room turned out and I am so excited to share this with you. But first, here's a little reminder of what the bathroom used to look like. So this bathroom was actually an addition to the original house and the main issue is that it is a pretty narrow space. As a bathroom, it really wasn't that bad, but it did feel a little bit bland and dated. We're gonna be keeping the tub in this subway tile here, but definitely getting rid of this tiled shelf as it felt a little bit clunky. Here is the other side of the bathroom, and like I said, it's really not that bad. So the first thing we did is we had our contractor remove all of that old tile, and this is the new tile that I picked out, which was pretty inexpensive, and I really liked the white and black look, which I thought was pretty classic, but not outdated, and I was hoping that it would help brighten the room a little bit. Here is what it looks like in the room, and you can see here that I also had our contractor remove that tiled wall behind the sink. One of the things that I knew I was going to replace was the vanity. I honestly hated the original vanity. And like I mentioned earlier, the biggest issue with this bathroom is that it's so narrow, so a standard vanity wouldn't fit in this space. I was also hoping to find something a little bit unique for this bathroom. So I was searching on Facebook Marketplace and I came across this cabinet. It is an old radio cabinet and the measurements worked out perfectly and it was only $50, so I went ahead and bought it. Here is a close-up of the cabinet and I love all of the details, but as you can see here, it's a little bit too tall to use as a vanity. So I went ahead and cut off the legs and here is what it looks like now. I did keep the cabinet legs, but I don't know what I'm gonna use them for yet. So if you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. This is what the bathroom is looking like so far. Wall-mounted fixtures are so great if you don't have much space. And here is the light that I picked out. I also picked out a really simple vanity mirror and I had all of the shower fixtures switched to black to match everything else. I know it's looking a little bit plain right now, but that's all going to change with the wallpaper. Just like the other bathroom, I'm going to be using wallpaper from Milton and King. This is the wallpaper I chose and it's part of a current collaboration with Kip and Co. And make sure you check this out because everything in this collection is just so beautiful and vibrant. I'll make sure to link everything I used down below, but I used a brush and a roller to apply the paste onto the wall and then I smoothed out the wallpaper panel with a smoothing tool. I continued to work my way down to the baseboard and once I had the first panel up, all I had to do was line up the pattern and this whole process honestly went by pretty quickly. You can see here that the ceiling in this bathroom is slanted and I just trimmed the wallpaper along the top with a box cutter. I cannot get over how beautiful this wallpaper is and the moment I saw it, I knew it would be perfect for our Louisville home because of the little horses that reminded me of the Kentucky Derby. Okay, so my camera definitely died during this process, but I finished this wall and I also went ahead and did this wall and it looks so, so good. And I made the executive decision not to do the wall behind me with the door just because this house is so old. It's over 100 years old, so the walls are pretty crooked. And it was really difficult trying to figure out how to get like a smooth corner just because the seams are all super, super crooked. So I decided not to wallpaper that wall, but everything else is looking so, so, so good. A little reminder of how we started out and here is the bathroom now. I know that wallpaper is not for everyone, but I think this one really helped transform this space. I also hung up some thrifted art and added a few finishing touches like this over the toilet storage. I absolutely love the way the vanity turned out. I think that it's so unique and it really fits the vibe of this 100 year old house. And of course the wallpaper, I love this wallpaper. I'll make sure to link it down below. And if you want to buy this wallpaper or any of their other gorgeous wallpapers, you can use code LITTLETOE10 for 10% off your order at Milton and King. Now let's move on to the final bedroom. This is what the bedroom looked like when we bought the house. It is an extension that was added on. So the brick wall that you're seeing is the exterior wall of the original house. Unfortunately, we'll have to remove the closet in the corner because it was really poorly made and the inside was pretty disastrous. The old doorway was covered up with this unfinished shelf and I will definitely be removing the outdoor track lighting. Finally, the floor was carpeted and not level so we will definitely have to replace that. 
Mark and I were actually back in New York when renovations were happening to this room, so I don't have a lot of footage, but here is a photo that our contractor sent us, and you can see here that he removed the closet as well as leveled out the floor. One of the things that I didn't like in this room was the doorway shelf. It kind of was an eyesore to me, and initially I had this grand idea of building this custom floor to ceiling headboard that would cover up that shelf, but we were so limited on time, so I ended up just covering the plywood with contact paper instead. I got this contact paper at Target, and I think I ended up using about three rolls, and I tried my best to cover up all of the exposed plywood. This is what the shelf looked like when I was done, and you can see here that I didn't cover the bottom shelf because I ran out of contact paper, and this is only a temporary solution, plus the bed is going to be covering that section. I was pretty happy with how the shelf was looking, so next is to lay out the rug, and just like the rest of the house, I'm using the ruggable system. This is the rug that I picked out for this room, and I'll make sure to link it down below. I cannot for the life of me find any of the horizontal footage that I took of this room makeover, so I only have footage from my phone. Once the rug was laid out, I just built the bed, and this was actually a bed that we had in storage, so we didn't have to buy a new one, which was great. Once the bed was built, Mark helped me with the mattress, and then my favorite part, which is making the bed. I don't know why, I just love making the bed, and then I also picked out these green pillows, which match the rug perfectly. After that, I hung up the curtains, and like the other rooms, I did one sheer layer and then another more opaque layer. Then I hung up some thrifted art and added a few decor items, and this room is definitely Daisy approved. I did want to mention that this room currently does not have a closet, and I did add a clothing rack so that guests can hang up their things, but the plan is to eventually build a closet in this room. If you watched my empty house for a video, this room was my least favorite and I was so uninspired, I just didn't know what to do with it. But I think this is now my favorite room in the house. So here is a little reminder of what it used to look like and here is the room now. I love how warm and cozy this room feels now and I actually think the doorway shelf kind of works styled this way. I found a pair of these nightstands and lamps on Facebook Marketplace, and I also bought this light fixture from a Habitat from Humanity Restore for only $2.50, and I love the way it looks with these globe lights. I styled the shelf with a few thrifted items, making sure to leave space on the lowest shelf for guests to use. I think changing the paint color from blue to white really made a big impact in how cozy is this little corner. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below what you thought about this makeover. All I really have left to show you all is the living room and the kitchen, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel to follow along, and as always, thank you so much for watching.